Hi guys, my name is Gael and I'm a direct response copywriter and I'm super excited to be on the show today with Prosper and I hope you'll enjoy it. Now, welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show and today we've got none other than Gael. Gael, how are you doing, my friend? I'm very good, my friend. And you? Very well, thanks. Now, Gael is a direct response copywriter. Obviously, good copy would elicit a response from the reader. Maybe you're putting out newsletters, blogs, or maybe some sort of attraction materials on your website. But if you're not using a copywriter or a direct response marketing person, you are missing out and leaving money on the table. Now, is that exactly what it is that you do there, Gael? Yeah, that's yeah, that's exactly that. So I, I I help my clients to get more response, and by response I mean for their audience, being their prospect, their leads, or their even their client, to take an action that would lead to a sale. Right. Okay. So you're guiding, um, you know, the 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 prospect through the journey, but just using you know the words that you're writing in order to solicit a response from them, right? Yeah, that's exactly that. So the key word that well, that's, uh, you have is, is called a call to action. Okay. Which means that you guide and you uh, influence um, the reader to take an action uh, that's going to lead him closer to becoming a client of yours. Right. Okay. So you as a direct response um, copywriter, um, yeah. what, what sort of, you know, work are you um open to be doing is it just newsletters blogs where would you help a client all right thanks for that question prosper so the there's a couple of aspects of writing that are um that, that i cover as a copywriter and it goes from everything from like doing a simple a facebook ad how do you make that facebook ad to resonate with your audience so that's the first aspect so the facebook ads uh, that would be then the squeeze page or the landing page where usually you give a lead, ma a lead magnet in exchange for an email address. So how to craft an effective uh, landing page uh, for your, well, for that person who's reading it. Right. Uh, then, then enters your funnel. That can be the email sequence or the email series. Uh, and of course, all the long form sales, le sales letter you would find online. So that covers all of that. You can even go to the extent of things like video sales letters. That would be like 20, 20 minutes or half an hour long. And funnily enough, more recently, something that's coming back up more and more, it's the traditional direct mail. So like the, the, the mail that, that, that you put in the post office, and then that would then reach uh, the recipient. And that's the thing that's, uh, that's coming a little bit more uh, as of late. So yeah, so that really encompasses all of that. Great stuff. Okay, so if I just write... A couple of words on my website and I'm like, hey yes. guys, my name is Prosper, come and buy my stuff. Why is that not good enough? So put it this way, there are usually three main things that I that are like the three common mistakes that I'm seeing on on most of the, the people who come to see me, right? The first one is to have a very, very strong uh, headline. And the headline is what's going to hook the reader to then start to continue reading um, the rest of the copy. And that's something that's absolutely vital to differentiate who you are in the marketplace, uh, first of all, and as well, um, offering a promise to the reader. That's the thing that's absolutely key. So if you just put some text, that won't be sufficient. You really need to have that headline that triggers an emotion, that triggers uh, the reader. So he's like, yeah, that's me and I want to keep reading. So that's the first thing, the headline. The second thing is the content of the, of the website, of the copy itself. In most of the case, um, the copy is what I call me-centric. So what do, what do I mean by me-centric? By me-centric, what I mean is, um, is that the content talks about what um, the business is actually doing. It's all about the business. What can they do, how great they are, um, and the pitfall of that is that people don't resonate when people are just bragging with themselves. You need a level of uh, authority, but there's a fine line between authority and bragging. Do you see what I'm saying? Right. Understandable. So obviously, um, you, you are mentioning that people don't care what you can do. They care what you can do for them. All right. Yeah, so exactly. 
whether you've won awards, whether you've won uh, all these accolades, it's okay so that they know they're dealing with a professional, but they don't yeah, care to hear the whole story about it. So well, how important is, does your work cover any storytelling in order to establish somebody as a brand? Yes, exactly. So uh, storytelling is at the core of what I do. So that's something I use. So direct response is something that it's advertising. It's how to inspire, influence, and uh, persuade someone to take an action. And the best way the mind, well, that's not the, the, the best way. It's like how the mind is used to relate um, to things in the world is about stories. And since we're a kid, we used to, to, to well, being told stories. So that's absolutely that. So it's how can I use stories to then sell a concept, to sell a product, to sell a service? So 100%. And one of the most fa famous, and that's something that's going to be of interest to your audience, is what's called the hero's journey. Right. And the hero's journey go, goes something along the line of, my life was okay, but there was something that was not working so well. I find why, but I struggle to get through it, to have a breakthrough. And, and then I find like, like a, some, some, some kind of a mentor or guide. And that person allows me to have that breakthrough. And then I create that journey that, that I call extraordinary. And then that person, th through that breakthrough, if I may say, uh, is becoming extraordinary. She's a, she comes on, a, on like an adventure. Okay. And then she, she comes on the, uh, on the other side of the adventure with so something new in her life. Mm. And that's something new in her life is usually why people come into business. Right. Okay. So just so that I have understood you with the heroes um, journey, somebody starts off from nothing, but they really want to go somewhere. So they're establishing yep. their story, um, escaping pain. And then in the middle, they have an epiphany, something that makes them realize that what they were doing was wrong. Now they're going to be able to, because of that thing, they're now going to be able to, um, um, you know, win, win at life and get the results that they want. Now, obviously that's a story that a lot of people are telling. That's a lot of, that's a story that people want to hear because it's inspirational and it helps people move from start to end. Now, what sort of, um, other examples of storytelling can, uh, people utilize? Like you've told, um, the hero's, uh, journey there. Is there any other ones just in case, the, the business owner doesn't have a, a regs to reach his story. How else can they uh, bring, bring it across? Well, put it this way. That's the, that's the most used and that's the best understood. So, which is why that's usually the one. So, it, that doesn't necessarily have to be like the big rug to reach that, 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 that you see all of the time. Uh, it can just be something as simple as um, life was okay. So, that's usually inspired by... Uh, what you would see in movies and usually in kids movie where everything goes fine and then there is an event that's happening through that fine life that's beauty, beautiful and so on and so, so forth and then from that point on, on, onward things start to break loose and then by fi finding or using this special or in the case of a business that your, your product or service is then, then you're able to go, go back to having that happy life that uh, you had at the beginning so that's that's another types where you've got like everything's fine, but then it's not so fine anymore. That has an impact on my life, and then start to find a way that how uh, with using your product or so service you can turn that around okay. and go back, go, go back up. All right, that's so, usually the other one. Yeah, so a hero's journey can just be okay. Yes, business is okay. Everything is is going on well, but maybe the person might just be burning out at the end of the day. So if they just change the way they do or the way they schedule their day, then all of a sudden they have free time and they're no longer burning out, right? So that, that also, is, okay, understood very well. Then. Now, <clears throat> now that we've talked about storytelling and, and how it is really crucial because that's the way um, people are genetically uh, modified to understanding and comprehending information. Is, <laughs> is it important for a business person to talk about numbers and, you know, quotas and do people understand numbers as in I made six figures or I made 700,000 last year and, you know, every quarter of the year, do people understand it in that way or do, do they really have to make it emotional and trigger something within, um, you know, the human psyche? That's, yeah, that, man, that's an excellent question. And actually the answer to that is that you need both. 
because it's well known that people buy uh, by you on emotions and then they justify that um, with certain figure. And um, the idea is that, yes, you need to mix both. So essentially, usually in the that's in your headline where you would see like the big claim to fame. How did I go from like living on a couch to making six, six figures a year? This sort of thing. And that's what's going to, to get your audience to start reading. And then to keep the, um, the interest of the reader, that's when you use the story. And that's in that, sto that sto story, you've got uh, to, to start working on emotions. And then as you progress through the, through the copy, that's when you start to be more factual. That's when you start to explain the nitty gritty aspect of how you deliver on your big promise. Wow. What it is that you have, what is special about what you do, about your product, about your service, that is going to um, ensure and give total certainty to the reader that with that, you can live on the big promise that you made at the top. So it's a mix, it's a mix of both. You remember, you need to always cater for two audiences. So you'd have people that, that are more like um, on the emotion and that's more triggered by, by that. And you've got people that are more analytical and people really love the number, the hard facts, what you've done and so on and so forth. So yeah, it's not one or the other, it's the art of really mixing the two. Right, okay, so from what I'm hearing is your, for your copy to be truly effective, um, it needs to you know, bring together um, things like pain, fear, joy, and many other emotions to the target audience, yeah. right? Exactly, yes. Okay. Now, is this something that I can learn, um, you know, just through academic knowledge or do I actually have to have experienced all these other emotions to actually be able to relay this message or is it just something I can just hire a copywriter for? So, you can do both actually. Yes, you can learn everything because you're a human being, but the real, right, the real trick of copy is not so much about understanding the emotion for yourself. It's understanding the emotions of your clients and what they're going through when they're about to make a, um, a purchase from you. What would hold them back? What would be all the objection? What's, the, what's happening in their mind as and when they're about to buy from you? And that's what's key. And that's something that's, that I'm seeing time and time again is that people think about themselves when they want to sell their product and services and they don't think as much about the, the state of mind of the audience. What's the state of mind of your client when you're about, um, well, when they are about to buy from you? What are they telling? What's happening in their mind? What, do, what are they telling to themselves about going yes or going no? And you want them to say yes. So what's happening in their mind when they're about to say yes? Mm. Um, and that's really where, um, w what you really hire a copywriter for the words. Yes, th that's necessary, but you can have the most beautiful words that would not make a sale because the research is not there. Well, you can have the research that's there and that's brilliant and the world can, can be okay. Or they can be, well, look, put it this way. What I'm saying, okay, is like the age level at mm -hmm. which you need to, to write, it's give or take for 12 years old. So okay. forget, forget all the jargon, forget all the fancy terms, forget all the fa fancy way of saying things, be simple and to the point. We, and as long as you've got that research that, that's done, that's grounded into all the psychology, all the psychometry, understanding the, the fear, the desire, the core human needs of your client, um, then you'll have a copy that's going to perform. And two other things that are absolutely key and that are rarely discussed um, on marketing shows is what's called, that's something that's been um, keyed by uh, Gene Schwartz, which is one of the most amazing copywriter I know, one of my, one of the guys I really look up to. And it's the level of awareness of your audience, which is how much, essentially the rule goes, you need to adapt what you say to your audience based on how much they know about you. To give you a comparison, it's like, you wouldn't have the same conversation with your wife now as you had when you were on the first date with her. Imagine if you go, go back to, to your wife now and go, go, go and see, so what's your name? And where do you live? 
<laughs> I actually remember I told my wife I was a dolphin trainer when we first met. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted right. to go dolphin. Okay. All right. So, yeah. so, so, so what you're saying there, Gael, is you gotta see it through the client's eyes. You've gotta speak them through the same voice, and you've gotta think and be in their shoes at that uh, particular time. So how much time then does it take for you to actually understand, you know, the uniqueness of um, your, your clients, clients, um, you know, problems and how my, your clients um, are serving them? Does it take a while from when you, 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 you take on a client of your own to actually understand yes. what they're providing and how they're providing it and how they're going to be delivering it to their own clients? Yeah. So you, so I, when I started, yes, it took me more time. It took me a focused work, like one to two weeks to really have that understanding because, you know, like I had to go to the thing that you need to really understand what's happening. So you need to start understanding how people are speaking. You need to start understanding what are the biggest problems. So it's things like understanding, like going to Facebook groups, understanding what they're talking about was the hot topic understanding the trend of the industry, understanding um, what people are complaining about online on websites like on Quora, uh, Yahoo Answers, this sort of websites. Um, things that are great is like all the reviews in Amazon where you can really have that understanding and of like the one star and two stars that tells you what are the real pain points with products and services. Um, now that I've got more expertise, I've tr actually created my own methodology that's that I've called the four pillars of growth. And that's that are the four key things I was just discussing. So understanding the your ideal clients, who they who they have. So people are usually talking about the demographic, people are talking about psychographic, so it's really understanding how they've constructed what you called um, the identity of the person, which is which goes along the line of understanding why. Right? What sort of watch do they, they wear? What, why do they wear a tie? Why do, do you wear a, a black shirt? What does that mean about you? And why do you do that? To whom do you asso asso associate? I, I can see you've got book behind yourself, which means that I would imagine that knowledge is something that's important to you. And knowing that you are in the marketing sphere, um, we both know that you always need to understand what's the latest way about engaging with human beings so that makes sense and then you've got the mic on your on your right um so it really shows that you're there for the podcast and and then you've got a camera in, in the back and then you've got your flag so you start to really understand how the personality is created so that's the first thing that's absolutely key the next thing so the pillar number two is how do you understand the fear and the desire of the person which are not being expressed so, and that goes along with it. And that's the not being expressed. It's not like, yeah, I like Lamborghini because of the marketing hype and all that stuff, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's about understanding what's really making you tick. Um, and then one tool that I really love is um, the one that's been coined by Anthony Robbins, which is the, the six core human needs. You know, the certainty and certainty. Um, love and love and uh, relation uh, the fourth one is um, about significance number five it's all about uh, growth and contribution that's the number six so how do people satisfy these needs and you, that, that that needs to transpire through your copy and the last two that's one the level of awareness we, that we just uh, that I've just shared and the last one is called the stage of sophistication of the market which is essentially if you know the um that's the principle that that say that every product and ser services at once was new to to market think of the iphone yep the iphone was brand new to the market only thing there that was a revolution but now as time moved on um you've got more competitor you've got more competition on the market you've got the samsung lgs and so on and so forth so the way the marketing the way the message come across had to evolve. They can't just go and say, we've got, we have the first touch screen on the market. We are awesome. Buy from us. Now they need to compete on other things. Like you see, they've just changed the, the, the way the, um, the, the, the headphone jacks are, 
that, that's something that just changed. They changed the the connectors. Right. So that they that set the standard in the market. Exactly, and they need to differentiate somehow. And for any businesses which are not the size of Apple, but like small and medium-sized businesses, it's really about what makes them unique on the marketplace. And one way to make you unique is to niche down. And that's absolutely key. So which is why I mainly uh, help and my focus is to help public speakers um, to get bums on seats. Um, and that's, and that, that's why as soon as you start to niche down, that's something that you start to really um, have more focus and people come to you more as well. Um, so that's the main thing. The other thing which is great is to create a methodology. When you've got that methodology for your business, that gives a guarantee to the person who's speaking with you uh, that you know how you're going to deliver on your promise and you've, you give them a roadmap on how to get there. And that's very key. Right. Wow. That so, makes sense, man. Oh, a lot. I mean, obviously, because I do understand what you're talking about. So it's not just a matter of copy and pasting words onto some website and hoping that somebody's just going to come because you know what? You put two and three words together, you know, so, <laughs> which is what a lot of people think that is what marketing is. And um, yeah, so obviously you've dealt with quite a lot of mediocre content out there. What is one really quick fix that you can just see somebody's website or somebody's copy and then you're like, what is it that you can just say, make sure you have this or do you have like a sort of a checklist that you can just say, uh, make sure the like you mentioned earlier on the heading, what, what, what are the just the quick things that you just look at over early when you're looking at somebody's um, piece of work? Right. Okay, cool. So for, for, for the thing, as I've said, the headline, make sure that's something that's bang on. That doesn't say something that, that generic. Say you don't say, say you've got an event that's coming up. Don't just say, I've got an event on such and such date. Go and say, right, what's in it for the client. Make that headline a benefit driven. Right. That's absolutely key. Uh, that's the first thing. The second thing, um, as I've said, is, um, moving the copy for being from being me centric to you centric for that i've got a really quick trick and that's something that anybody listening to that to the podcast uh, can can do is to start counting the number of time uh, they see uh, the problem i in in the, the copy and starting to to flip it to you and then they start and then they start to engage more with the audience. Okay. So is, does three. that also, does that yes. also go with speaking? So when you're speaking in, in, in public, you have to be saying you, 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 you. To an extent. Yes. Okay. <laughs> and you, that's you, 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 you. <laughs> especially if you wave your finger, listen, <laughs> listen. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Don't, that's how recommended. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, yeah. To to an extent, at some point, of course, you need to say I to explain what you do. Don't get, don't get me wrong, but that's the thing. In most of the case, like, yeah, that's going to help you flip the way you look at your business and your interaction with your with your clients. And last but not least, and that's something I'd love to insist on that because that's key for direct response, is to have a very clear call to action okay and okay. that's the, the most important thing if i can please if for you listening on that video please put strong call to action to your copy that's going that can transform your business overnight great stuff I mean, now no yeah. now look at this gael all right Everybody has been watching this right now for say the last 10, uh, 15 minutes. And now they really are interested and you've picked their, um, you know, their appetite for <clears throat> wanting to learn more about content. Now, how can they get a hold of you? Let's hear your call to action here. How can they get a uh, hold of me? Thanks for the, for the question. But uh, yeah, man, the, the simplest thing, so to, to engage directly with me is to simply dropping me an email. Um, info at services42.com that's my current website um, so that's something that yeah happy to have a chat there um, and what I can do as well for your audience that are that's there I'm happy to um, let's say within the next six months um, to start having a 30-minute th free consultation with them 
um, about their about their copy. So happy to do a review of their copy and see how um, they can improve it so that they can increase their uh, conversion. Happy to do that for you, man. That's a really big call to action. And um, obviously, I'm going to be <clears throat> first in queue for that one because after you've told me all these things, now I feel I feel naked, you know? <laughs> I feel like... <laughs> <laughs> I think maybe something needs to be looked at there. Well, I can't so thank you enough, Gael, for taking your time. I know, obviously, you're supposed to be, you know, out there really constructing uh copy and making sure that everybody every one of your clients is getting results no like um like we have uh, said if you're watching this and you've you know picked up a nugget or two i will be putting in all of gael's uh, contact details in the uh comments below okay now if you have noticed good copy actually elicits a response from the reader your newsletters your blogs all your attraction materials and anything that's on your website has to elicit some sort of a response with a call to action. Now, Gail, I can't thank you enough for spending your time with us today and especially for the gift that you've given us. Man, you're welcome. I really appreciate being, being there. I've seen a couple of your videos and I, I, I have to say, man, I really like your concept of like giving to others and improving their lives. So that's something that's key to me. And where I really resonate with that is I know that by helping one client, that's going to help his family and then he's going to help his co co community and as, as you move forward, then it's going to help the world. And that's how I think we can really make a difference. So uh, yeah, I'm really super happy that yeah, you invite him on your podcast, man. Thank you. Well, thank you to, for making the contribution and let's see all the ripples uh, take effect. I cannot thank you enough, my man. Thanks, bud. Have a great right. day. Cool, cool stuff. Good. Fantastic. Wow. Fantastic. Wow. Okay. Whew. <laughs> How do you think we went? I think that was good, man. Yeah, we created some magic there. You, 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 you brought the house down with some nuggets. That's really amazing, man. Thank you so much. Yeah. You're welcome, man. <laughs> like, no, dude, that is fantastic. I'm so glad I'm, yeah, that you inv inviting me. And, so, yeah, th thank you. Oh, 